On the morning of the 13th of April 2008 at 10 a.m., a grisly discovery by a railway worker found the lifeless body of the much beloved children TV presenter Mark Spate hanging from the roof of Macmillan House in London, Paddington Station. An inquest into his death opened on the 16th of April found that his cause of death was hanging from his own shoelace. He had been dead in the building for more than six days before he was found and he had written two suicide notes, one in his pocket and the other one at his family's home. His death came shortly after he was arrested on suspicion of murdering his fiancée Natasha Collins. Spade was released without charge and an inquest determined that Collins died of drug overdose and severe burns to her body. She had been found dead in the bath with burns and a significant amount of cocaine in her system along with sleeping pills and vodka. Heartbroken and consumed by grief, Spade moved in with Collins' mother and had planned to meet her at Covent Garden for a coffee on April the 7th, 2008. He was dropped off at Wood Green Station but never arrived. He had missed an appointment with his counsellor but this was due to confusion over dates. The next day, Spate was reported missing and his family along with Colin's mother made a public appeal for him to make contact and unfortunately his body would be found a few days later. Mark Spate was a big part of my childhood and I remember coming from home and watching Smart which was a children's program at the time. This was a more simpler time as YouTube wasn't around and access to the internet was limited to the local library every Saturday. When the details of this story broke, I was too young to fully understand what had actually happened and why. Now that I'm an adult, this case is such a tragedy that two people who were deeply in love would meet such a horrible fate and die. Mark Spate was born on the 6th of August 1965 in Sizedon, Staffordshire, the son of an art teacher, Jacqueline, and property developer, Oliver Spate. Mark grew up in the well to do suburb of Tettenhall near Wolverhampton. He had his first break into TV as a contestant on ITV's Blind Date, hosted by Celia Black. By 1992, his talent for comic expression landed him a role in an advert for Crisps. The year, he also made his West End debut in the musical Moby Dick and appeared in a video with Kylie Minogue. His big break came in on the BBC children's TV show Smart, which he presented from 1994 onwards. His success led to the appearance mainly on children's TV programs such as Scratchy and Co, Blue Peter and See It and Saw It, where he met Natasha Collins in 1999. He toured with art workshops for children around the country and became the president of the Muscle Dysmorphia campaign. His friend with Natasha Collins developed into a serious relationship back in 2001 after she was in a near fatal car crash. She had won a major role in Channel's 4 soap, Hollyoaks, when she was knocked down by a car in North London. She spent six weeks in a coma and after her memory was badly affected, making it difficult to remember lines. Her career never really recovered, but in retrospect, the most devastating side effect was that the panic attacks and her nightmares she suffered as a result. Natasha had turned to drugs as a way to cope with the flashbacks. They became engaged in 2005. The couple had plenty of friends, but were not great socializers. On the evening of January the 2nd, the couple had been at home celebrating having time off work together at the apartment in London and had been drinking and taking cocaine that evening. It was not until the following morning at around 1.15pm that Mark woke up and found Collins in the bathtub. Paramedics attended the scene, but it was clear that she was already dead. When asked whether Miss Collins had taken anything, Spade said that she had taken a bit of cocaine. He later said they had both taken recreational drugs before going to bed at around 4am in the morning. Police found sleeping tablets by the bath and a bottle of champagne next to their bed. Mark was arrested on suspicion of murder and supplying Class A drugs but was later released without charge. Though Mark Spade was not charged, his career at BBC was tarnished. He resigned from the BBC in February saying the grief made it impossible to continue. Soon afterwards, he moved in with his fiancée's mother, Carmen Collins, 57, in Palmer's Green, North London. 
She spoke of taking him into her home as a broken man and blamed himself for his fiancée's death and sobbed into his pillow every night. Miss Collins said he joined her in church every Sunday to pray for Natasha's soul, telling, telling her the guilt would stay with him for the rest of his life. Mark Spate was dropped off at Wood Green Station to catch up with Collins' mother. Unfortunately, he did not arrive. The next day, Spate was reported missing and his family along with Miss Collin made a public appeal for him to make contact. Unfortunately, his body would be found a few days later. An important detail to mention was that two officers who spoke to Spade before his death described him as vacant and distraught and deep in thought, but he refused their help. He later withdrew some money from a cash point before boarding the tube. The 42-year-old's body was found by a railway worker at 10am in the morning hanging in a partially disused pot of Macmillan's house. One source said his body was discovered in the roof where the joints are. He was certainly not visible to anyone on the ground. When interviewed about the death of a co-star, Christine O'Brien said, We were all de completely devastated. It was just horrendous. Then I was asked to talk about him on the kids' news round. I felt quite a lot of pressure, which is weird because I knew it wasn't about me, but I felt like I was in the eye of the storm. Covering this story for me was very difficult, especially somebody who I grew up watching as a kid which adds more to the sadness of this case. I wanted to leave you with this. This is a small line from Oliver Spears, Mark Spears' father, in his eulogy. And he says, Sleep well in eternity. You have earned your rest.